When The Intuition of Haruhi Suzumiya was published last November after a seven-year hiatus, anime fandom as a whole saw a clear split. Either you're too young to know who she is, or you remember far too well. In 2006, everyone was talking about the hit series about a selfish, reckless, and unconsciously omnipotent high school girl and the snarky narrator who has to deal with her. The original light novels had started three years earlier, but got big when Kyoto Animation adapted them to two seasons in a movie, and the series defined the latter half of the 2000s in anime. When its popularity collapsed in on itself a few years later, there were a few go-to reasons. The show's meta-experimental nature, which had previously drawn people in, drove them away by using two-thirds of a season on a time loop arc of painstakingly recreated, near-identical episodes. The source material's release schedule slowed to the point of having years between stories or volumes. What new content we got? Whether it was an alternate universe spin-off by a different studio, or a viral ad campaign for a pachinko machine, disappointed fans just by not being season 3, which we'll probably never get. But while frustration with the lack of new content, or rather the specific new content people wanted, was probably the biggest reason for the crash and burn, you'll also find endless discourse about the title character and, to a lesser extent, the actual protagonist as well. Suzumiya Haruhi face kicks, gropes, and blackmails her way into getting what she wants on the regular. And Kyon starts out with an attitude that everything is not his problem, leading him to let her run roughshod over the world, at least to start. There are a lot of people who dropped the series because of this, or who look back on it uncomfortably, often feeling that the series is condoning these behaviors, or at least giving a wink nudge, we know it's bad, but look how fun it is. It is pretty uncomfortable at times, but I'd still argue that the whole point of the story is about these two smartening up and becoming better people. It's as much about Haruhi learning to give half a care about anyone other than herself, as it is about Kyon breaking out of the role of passive observer, if not more so. And before anyone jumps in saying they don't know or care what happens in the unadapted light novels or the non-canon spin-offs, just to bring the point home, I'm only going to cover the show and the movie. So, let's get to it. Going chronologically, the first arc, covering the first light novel, sets the stage for Haruki steamrolling people, Kyon trying and failing to stay out of it, and everyone around them having a problem with both. The rest of the SOS Brigade has personal issues with Haruki. Yuki, who's just learning to have feelings and a personality, often has to compromise them for the mission. Mikuru gets abused at every turn as Haruhi's mascot, though her actual feelings on the matter are constantly brought into question. And Itsuki feels he has to play the enigmatic tease or she'll rewrite his personality for real. And all three confess their stories to Kyon with the message that as much as he might want a quiet, normal life or feel resigned to it, he's going to have to play an important role here whether he wants to or not. And the climax of this arc is important. While Kyon's first instinct to keep his head down and go unnoticed isn't working, and while Haruhi gets settled and still feels something is wrong, she nearly upends the universe and everyone puts everything on the line just to tell Kyon to do something about it. Attempts by other people to appease or amuse Haruhi have by this point almost gotten him killed. And while he still takes the advice, he interprets it in a way that ends in his telling and showing Haruhi that the excitement and adventure she's looking for can be found in the world without scrapping everything that disappointed her. And as we see at the end of the episode, she's at least partially taken it to heart. The few arcs right after are about trying to balance fun with avoiding real-world consequences, making the two of them more responsible even if neither was consciously in control of the situation. Remote Island Syndrome was a murder mystery that they both had to figure out was a fake set up for entertainment. Endless 8 was caused by Haruhi assuming that just because she had already finished her summer homework, everyone else must have, and it's solved by Kyon realizing that and having to tell everyone else while she's still there to hear it. And the student film was largely composed of Kyon doing his best to manage Haruhi and everyone else, Kyon taking initiative, Haruhi starting to understand other people, and the end result being harmless fun instead of hurting other people or trying to blend in while it happens. Both of them learn, as they open up to each other later on, that their opposing outlooks came from complexes about being unimportant, a face in the crowd. But just because you want to be an individual and have an interesting life, you can do that and still care about other people, instead of either becoming dynamic but selfish, or resigning yourself to being a bystander living a boring life. And by this point, they've each started to learn and internalize that. Which brings us to the chronological climaxes. By the school festival, Haruhi has independently decided to do things for those in need. Filling in for the Eno's frontman lets her play around with presentation. Her own. 
It's not Mikuru in a bunny suit forced to go up on stage, it's Haruki herself doing it willingly. And not only is she getting the attention and excitement she craves, she's actually helping someone else in the process instead of hurting them for it. And the episode with Kimidori shows the brigade getting into their latest adventure because the data overmind decided the best kind of bait was someone asking them for a favor. Conversely, Disappearance is all about Kyun deciding on his own to act for everyone's sake instead of accept a quiet life where he can blend in and everything seems normal. He searches for Haruki, he pulls the brigade back together, he breaks out of the illusion and even stands up to the Overmind. This time he's the one doing the saving. Both of these characters are already well on the road to becoming better, less selfish people, and the dynamic, bombastic energy that Haruhi embodied and Kyon shied away from now gets channeled by both of them into constructive things that are actually better for the people around them. Haruhi tends to get simplified in people's minds as the jerk tramples everyone while meta guy snarks about it show, and while this isn't necessarily wrong, it's never been that simple either. Fifteen years worth of influence on anime and light novels leave shades of Haruhi wherever you look, and the two extremes its lead and title character represent end up bringing them together across the gap that a lot of those stories examine. Yes, you can and should indulge the dream of being special and having a happy and interesting life without either actively hurting people or leaving them to be hurt. And years after the peak of its popularity, it doesn't get enough credit for that even if the show still lives deep in our hearts, more than many of us would want to admit. This is Secret Identity Studio, and if you have Hara Hara Yukai stuck in your head again now, you're not the only one. Remember that one time they took the show's website down for a day and all the conspiracy theories about a new season popped up? Good times.